Hi guys, you're so welcome here today for another podcast on the personality disorder, the narcissistic personality disorder. If we really find out about this and educate ourselves about this particular cluster B personality disorder, we have a greater chance of avoiding these people going forward or knowing how to handle them going forward. And also healing when we've been in particularly an intimate relationship with one or even in any circumstance, familial or workplace. Getting the education, knowledge is power. Knowledge is always power. So let's get into this episode. Today, I would like to talk about the reverse smear campaign. And that's just a term I've made up, but it's something the narcissist does and something all narcissists have the ability to do. And that's to reverse the trajectory of even the most heinous smear campaigns that they use or put about on people when they're narcissistically injured or when they're trying to justify their actions in a cruel discard um, with someone they've been in an intimate relationship with. So let's get into it. Narcissists are manipulators. They manipulate people and situations. Normal people, normal human beings, have reciprocal relationships with people, not manipulative or transactionary, even though some of these elements sometimes come into all relationships. They are not, with normal people, predominantly manipulative. So narcissists always follow a, a cyclical behaviour pattern. It's not linear, it's not progressive, it's not productive. It's repeat, repeat, repeat. And we're all familiar with the classic cyclical pattern of behaviour from the narcissist, which is love bomb, devalue, discard. And I would add in smear campaign and then love bomb again if if their target is not educated and not aware that they were with the narcissist, the narcissist has the ability to come back after a smear campaign. So you say, well, how do they do this? They've gone, left you and told all their family awful things about you and told their friends and put it around if they really, really want to get back at you and control you and control the narrative, they will put it widely about that you have serious issues, problems, that are you're a bad person um, and that they will make sure gets back to you to hurt you even further after they've discarded you in a very cruel way. So the smear campaigns against people can be really, really heinous. They can destroy people's confidence. They can really hurt to the point where an individual gets very depressed and sometimes even suicidal. So these are nasty, vindictive, vicious campaigns that narcissists use in order to feel in control of a situation, in order to justify their bad behaviour, in order to rewrite history and in order to feel okay with themselves for what they've done. So why would they go to reverse a smear campaign? The narcissist is working in a cycle and they have cycles going on everywhere. Let's just say they have a bicycle shop. They have wheels turning in every direction, working on different targets and there are different stages with different targets. These can be their exes, these can be new supplies that they're grooming, these can be friendships or family members. You're always on one part of the narcissist cycle, whether you're at the very top or the very bottom. If you're of use to the narcissist for supply, and if they've invested in you and given you their time, etc., etc., then you are of use to the narcissist. The narcissist assumes an ownership of you and will reserve the right to re-engage with you 
when you have filled up on supply again and come to basically suck the energy out of you again. So guys, the smear campaign for the narcissist, even though when they're leaving you and they get really vicious about words they will use against you. And this actually, just before I go on, a smear campaign can be delayed. They may not initially smear you, but when they hoover you, if you don't accept the hoover or for, for some other reason, they can escalate a smear campaign at a later stage. It doesn't always happen just after they discard you, but there will be some type of bad words said against you at the discard. So they have gone through the cycle with their new so source of supply after they've left you. They may be on the downturn with that source of supply and looking around for somebody else to hook into. They see you, they think about you, you somehow come up in conversation, they reevaluate the situation with you and it looks more favourable than the one they currently have with their new source or their new intimate partner. So what they have to do in order to approach you again is to make you white again from the black position that you were in. Remember, the narcissists work with black and white thinking. So in order to change you back as the good guy again, just to make it as simplistic as possible, they can't lose face or credibility. The mask can't lose mask face or credibility with the people who are always with them, their family and their friends and the, the people who, who they need to believe in them and to uphold the mask as they go through life. So they have to start bringing it about that you're actually not the devil, that you're not the spawn of the earth, that you're not the dirt upon which they don't want to walk. How do they do that? How do they come back from the position, that type of position? Guys, that's no bother to a narcissist. They gradually, gradually bring you back into the sphere of being okay. And this is how they do it. There's a few different techniques that they use in the reverse smear campaign. One of the techniques they use is to, this is now with their friends and family, you imagine the narcissist, you know, reintroducing the idea of you again, of you again. They'll start off with saying, you know, Paul is not so bad. I think after all, I was really heavily influenced and then they'll start to blame shift somebody. I found out in fact that what Johnny Jews over there said about Paula isn't actually correct and I need to reevaluate to be fair to her. I need to reevaluate what I heard from that person because I fell hook, line and sinker for Johnny Jews and Jilly Jews, Johnny's friend, had to say about Paula. You'd all be thinking now, this one, this one is crackers. You get the picture, guys. You get the picture. So the narcissist blame shifts another person and justifies that to family and friends that they fell for this person's smear campaign of you and they bought into it. It wasn't really them that all this bad stuff came from and that it wasn't actually all true about you, the narcissist had found out. So that's one technique, technique A. Technique B is the narcissist begins to reintroduce you into conversations, saying they'd heard you weren't doing too well. They get a bit of pleasure out of that. It's kind of a, a double edged pleasure. They'll start to say to family and friends, um, you're not doing so good. Paula's not doing so good. And, you know, on reflection, um, I think I need to take some accountability here. And this is where it gets very confusing with people when they bring in these words like accountability. They have no intention of taking accountability. They're using the word to manipulate others into thinking that they're taking accountability. 
They're using the word to manipulate others into thinking that they're going to compromise with their target, feel sorry for their target and be the hero to their target and go in and try and sort things out in inverted commas by being the accountable, fair hero or heroine going in to rescue, to be the gladiator of compromise, giving a total false impression of their humility, their sense of forgiveness and compassion and their willingness to meet the person that they fell out with halfway. If you feel tricked by this one, guys, you can listen to the words, the way you can detect whether this person is genuine is to observe, observe their actions when they actually go back into a situation, see if they were genuinely sorry, see if they genuinely meant what they said. Narcissists use words the way a snake charmer uses a flute to get the snake out of the basket. Be careful of the narcissist's words. So that's that's B, that's B type of um manipulation that they use to reverse your smear campaign, the smear campaign that they ran on you. The next thing I would have would be that they would really like, this kind of breeds into B, they would really like to to try again and to give the relationship another chance. Um, they realise that you have an awful lot of problems and an awful lot of issues and they did love you sincerely and they would really like to try and re-engage re with you to help you. This is taking no accountability but riding on the, the hero's horse back into coming back to rescue you. This also leaves them the opportunity to re-reverse the reverse smear campaign. So they've done their smear campaign and now they're going to reverse it and go back to an old source of supply. But they're also setting their escape from the old, from the old source of supply up by leaving thoughts in their coterie's mind or the people that, that matter to them or that they need to sustain the mask with to saying, the fault was all yours, was all the targets. They're going back in to see if their help will improve the behaviour of the target. This is leaving them a get out clause to say, I know you get it. To say, look, six months down the line, one month down the line, one week down the line, if they want to leave the person they go back to. And this is why... Hoovers often, people that accept Hoovers often have a, a much worse time with a narcissist and a much shorter cycle with a narcissist. Not always, but sometimes. So the narcissist has left themselves a get out clause by saying, look, I went back. I know I've told you she's a lot of issues and I did my best. And alas, even though I'm wonderful, I'm empathic, I'm compassionate. I did all I could for poor Paula or poor Jack or poor whoever the narcissist has put down on the ground as being a hopeless case. I rode in on my charger and I gave it my all. But this case was so serious and so bad that all I got was a slap in the face for my efforts. So I had to leave again. And then... They're getting, regenerating a lot of attention. They're regenerating sympathy from their coterie and they're coming out smelling of roses. The poor guy, this poor old narc has gone in and done their damnedest to rescue this, to, sorry guys, to rescue this hopeless case. And they gave their all, alas, to no avail. And they ride back out again to the adulation and cheers of all their fans and followers. I don't mean to make light of it, but 
when you have gone over and over experiences and heard experiences with these narcissistically disordered individuals, it's the same thing over and over again. And the delusion levels of the narcissists are so high and the disgusting behavior is so predictable that it becomes a kind of a, oh, here we go again. Here's another one of them at it. And then you feel so sorry for the target, for people that don't actually know what they've been through with this narcissist and are actually feeling extreme pain, extreme pain, having given the narcissist a second chance and it all coming to no avail and, the cru- and a second cruel discard. Once you get educated and you look at them, you do get bored by them. You do kind of have to laugh at them. And when you get to that stage, you know you're healed. But they're still dangerous. So still stay aware and be on guard. And total sympathy if you are still under a narcissist's spell or trying to escape one of these relationships. Because they're so life disturbing and so energy sucking and so exhausting. And so absolutely awful to have to go through one that while you're in the battle, it's, I would say, one of the worst things a person can go through. So, guys, if you've any comments on a reverse smear campaign that you experienced yourself or either saw a narcissist do, please leave in the comments because all this information and particularly the comments help other people going through these disgusting behavior patterns and being embroiled with narcissists and not realizing that they're dealing with someone who is incapable will not change just will not change if a behavior pattern changes with a narcissist it's because they need to manipulate someone So just taking that on board, it is possible for the narcissist to reverse even the most heinous smear campaign. And smear campaigns in themselves run on a cyclical and in a cycle like all the narcissist's behaviours. And if anyone, guys, is doing a smear campaign on you, having purported to love you initially, it's a huge sign that you are dealing with a narcissist. Because let's, let's just say it as it is. Who the heck does that? Who, as an adult, goes from a loving relationship to cutting someone off, to discarding them, and then to go round the world saying that this person was a piece of crap? It just doesn't happen with normal loving human beings. So if this has happened to you, if it is happening to you, or if it's happening to someone else, It's a huge sign that the person is a narcissist. So use it as a diagnostic tool in amongst all the other behavior patterns that we've described. It can give you a very good idea of who who you are actually dealing with. Until the next time, take great care of yourselves and have a very blessed day.